Hi guys. Hi guys. My name is Debbie. And I'm Paul. We are pastors of the Haven Church in New Jersey. We're so glad you're here. Uh, we at the Haven believe that we exist to create a safe haven for people to experience Jesus. Our team has put together these videos to help you on your spiritual journey, to bring encouragement, strength, to keep your eyes on the Lord as you walk through the challenges of life. Now, these are meant to be supplemental to your personal relationship with God. And of course, it's very important, according to scripture, to have a home church. If you live in the New Jersey area and would like to be part of the Haven Church, be sure to check the links below so that we can connect with you. We're so glad you're here. Enjoy. Haven Church, how are you guys doing today? Man, my Haven family, I am so excited to be with you today. My name is Troy uh, Welty. I'm down here in Charlotte, North Carolina. I'm so honored and so blessed that pastor would have me be able to come to you today, whatever room that you're in, whatever digital or virtual space that you're in or physical space that you're in, to be able to download something that God has been downloading into me uh, especially, I think, during this season. So I can't wait for that. But, guys, we're, we're almost there. I mean, we're almost at the end of 2020. Christmas is upon us. If you're anything like my house, you've been listening to Christmas music since January, it seems like. You've got Hallmark movies running everywhere. And they all have the same ending. I mean, let's just be honest about this. Um, I mean, we're in church after all. Um, you've got Christmas lights. You've got the Christmas tree. I'm sure you've already got all of your Christmas uh, you know, presents gotten for, and I'm sure that you guys are way better at that um, than me. But the Christmas season is upon us. I'm so honored, I'm so thankful to continue the sermon series, Christmas and Family, um, as we talk about the greatest gift that was ever given to the planet Earth. So a little before I get into the sermon, a little bit about me. If you've never even seen me, you're probably like, why is this random guy talking to us? Uh, my name is Troy. I consider myself a part of the Haven family. I am in Charlotte, North Carolina, so I'm down south. It's a little cold here, probably not as cold as it is up there. Um, but I am married. I'm married to a woman who is way out of my league, um, and it's awesome. I mean, it's awesome. <laughs> um, we've been married for about seven years. I have, we have a five-year-old daughter who is like this big ball of energy and sass and just big smiles and laughs. Um, and she's five years old. And I have a son who is four months old. He'll be four months and two days. Um, so we're, we're excited about that and him. And he's just the most smiley baby I've ever seen. Um, that's me. That's my family. Love sports. Love God, love people, um, and uh, love movies, all this stuff. So I think we'd be good friends. I think, honestly, we, we would be good friends. Um, but today, I wanted to talk to you guys about um, something that's been on my heart most of this entire year. Um, and I don't know if you're anything like me, but me, I'm a planner. Um, I love to plan things out. I love um, task lists. I love calendars. I have all of my calendars are color coded. All of my task lists are organized. I love having a plan, um, and I love executing that plan as best as possible. Well, I don't know if you guys have noticed, but uh, 2020 has um, has taken most plans and just ruined them and, and wrecked them. Um, and so, I as I was preparing for today, and as God was kind of pouring into me. Um, I, I got to this message, and we're going to be in Luke chapter 1. And if you don't have your Bible, it's okay. It'll be on the screen. Uh, but we're going to be in Luke 1, 26 through 38. Um, and we're going to talk about some change of plans. And we're going to dive into some of the greatest change of plans that ever has occurred in the Bible. And, and on, I would be as boldly to say on planet Earth. And we're going to figure out how we can learn from that situation and how we can be the people that God has called us to be, even in the midst of change plans. And some change of plans are good. Some change of plans are terrifying. Some, some change of plans are okay. Uh, but wherever we fall across the spectrum of those change plans, I want us to dive into God's word to see what we can pick up 
and see how we can face those changes with faith rather than fear. Um, and we can be bold and we can be courageous uh, rather than be afraid and be anxious. So before we get into the scripture, let me pray for us. Heavenly Father, I don't know who is listening to this. I don't know where they are. But God, I just ask that you be present in their space and in their heart. I ask that you flood the rooms that we're in, whether that be a digital space or whether it's a Starbucks or whether that be in our house or maybe it's we're listening to this in our cars, we're driving by or maybe we're gathered together as much as we possibly can. But God, I just ask that you, your presence just flood our environment. And God, we, we have a lot of things distracting us. Oftentimes, if Satan can't derail us, he'll distract us. And so, God, I just ask that all of the distractions we just lay at your feet. All of the things that are keeping us from paying attention to you, we just surrender to you. And we just clear our minds. And we clear our hearts so that your spirit, so that your word can come alive to us and fill our hearts and fill our lives so that we can... We can love you more and we can know you more and we can be more of the people you have called us to be. We love you and we're thankful for you in advance for what you're going to do during the next, I don't know, 72 hours of my preaching. I'm just kidding. Uh, maybe 71. But over the next 15 to 20 minutes, God, just please be in this space, be in our hearts and in our minds. Let us look to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay. Guys, I'm not going to preach for 72 hours, uh, I don't think. I think Pastor Paul would have something to say about that. Um, but so like I said, change of plans, we're going to talk about them. 2020 has been a year full of plans and adjusting and throwing whatever you had, whether that's plans for your business, plan for your job, plans for your kids. I mean, for those of us who have kids, I don't know what it's like in New Jersey right now um, or in the Philadelphia area, but I know in Charlotte, North Carolina, we're doing this. My daughter's in kindergarten. I had this vision and I had this thought of bringing my daughter to kindergarten and walking her to her door, walking her to her classroom, probably bawling my eyes out because that's what happens with my daughter. Um, she's not crying. I'm crying. Um, but walking her, you know, watching her grow up, take that step um, and go to kindergarten, go to school for the very first time. It was nothing like that. Um, we, we go in a carpool lane the the they take her temperature they ask if they've she's been around with anybody with covid we can't even get out of the car we can't walk her to the door we can't do any of that stuff um why do you guys have heard i i i had a son this year i in your mind you think of having your baby and you think about everything that's entailed you think about your friends and your family who are there and up until about two weeks before my son deacon was even born i didn't even know if I was going to be allowed to be present in the delivery room. And thank, thank goodness I was, but all of our plans changed. Everything adjusted. And our expectations had to, had to adjust as well. And that was hard. Some change of plans are amazing. Some change of plans are horrible. Um, that could be a doctor's uh, diagnosis. That could be your kid failing out of school. That could be your business or losing your job or your job turning into something that you didn't expect. Expectations and our plans change all the time. And I want to talk about a story that I think is one of the most beautiful stories in the world, but it starts with a change of plans. It's going to be in Luke chapter 1, and it's going to be 26 through 38. <clears throat> it says, in the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, we'll talk about her later. Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee. Pause for one second. So Nazareth, you have to understand, Nazareth is a small town. In the eyes of Judea, which is kind of the capital of, of the Jewish community, the Jewish tradition, this Nazareth is kind of looked down upon because it's so small, so insignificant. It's also in a town, a town in Galilee, which means that it is more surrounded by Gentiles. Gentiles at the time were looked at as unclean, unholy. And so Nazareth was kind of looked down upon. It was like a castaway. So and then verse 27, it says, God sent the angel Gabriel to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, 
a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. Okay, so here's where we are at this point. So all we know up until this point is Mary is planning on marrying Joseph. Okay? So just think about your own marriage if you've been married. Or think about your wedding and what you want to be your wedding. You're, there's so many things to plan. There's so many expectations. There's, there's, a, there's a process. There's a standard. There's a cultural appropriation. There's so many plans that you're making. I mean, I was a part of none of them when I for for our wedding. I think I was asked what type of um, food do you want, and uh, what type of song do you want to dance to in our first thing, and that was it. Uh, thank Jesus, like that was all I had to decide. My wife decided to kick me out of the rest. But I mean, how many plans do you have to go through when you're married? Just imagine the plans that that she was making in preparation. Then it says in verse 28, the angel went to her and said, <clears throat> Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. I'm going to repeat that because it's important here in a second. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. So I, I want to pause here because I think it's interesting that this angel, Gabriel, He's coming to Mary, and then to put her at ease, he says, Mary, do not be afraid. You are highly favored with God, and the Lord is with you. Now, just here in this part of the story, it's like, yes, absolutely. She is going to be, she has been chosen to bring about and to birth the Messiah, to be the mom of the Messiah, who is going to rule, who is king of king and lord of lords. If you just look at this part of the story, you're like, yes, she is highly favored. But we actually know the end of the story. We know what's ahead of Jesus, and we know what's ahead of Mary. And while ultimately it is filled with the greatest sacrifice that has ever been on earth and that ever will be, for Jesus dying on a cross for our sins, you have to understand that as I read this story, and I know the end in, end in my mind, I'm looking and thinking and considering Mary and the thought process of this angel Gabriel saying, you are highly favored. And so I want to I want to stop here to, to just talk through that God's favor does not necessarily always mean that you are highly comfortable. That you are never going to be without pain. That you are never going to be uh, without sorrow. With your, you're never going to be without grief. It doesn't mean that because you are highly favored, it means that you are going to now be highly comfortable and your life is going to be easy. And I think sometimes as believers, sometimes as people, we like to think of God and his favor and his promises as absent of pain, sadness, sorrow, and grief. And that's just not the case. And we see that here. And as we continue, so, so Gabriel sends all of this and he just blows her mind. He just says, you are going to have the, the Messiah. You are going to be born or you're going to give birth to the Messiah. And so I love, I love Mary's response. So she just says, how, how will this be? How is this possible? Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin, how many of us have been there before? I don't know about you guys, but this year I have asked how is this possible more this year than I ever have before? How is this possible? How are we supposed to overcome this? How are we supposed to lead through this? How are we supposed to rise up and be the people that God has called us to be when there's all of this stuff surrounding us, all of these things that are going horribly wrong. There's sickness, there's pain, there's um, financial trouble, there's addiction trouble, there's racial tension, there's, there's anything and everything in between. And sometimes when I look at the landscape or if I hop on social media or I go onto the news, 
I'm thinking, man, this world is full of despair. And how is this amazing thing going to be possible? How is this promise that you have given me, how is that possible? And I love that. She says, how is this possible? And then Mary says her reality. She says the limitation that she can see. She says, and I think oftentimes I do that. I don't know about you guys do that. But if God tells me something, I look at God and I say, I say, God, how is this possible because I am weak? How is this possible because I am not strong? How is this possible because of all of my sin, because of all of my depravity? How is it possible because I am this? How is this possible since I am a virgin? And the angel answered and said, The Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be, be born will be called the Son of God. So, so the answer of, of Mary saying, How is this possible? The answer of the angel, Gabriel, is the Holy Spirit. And I've got news for you guys. If you have Jesus Christ, if you've accepted him as your Lord and Savior, if you call yourself a believer, if you follow him and you've surrendered your life to him, I want you to make sure that you unequivocally and clearly know that the same Holy Spirit that came upon Mary is the same Holy Spirit that is living and breathing inside of us. So if you want the answer to the question, how is it possible that I will overcome this depression? How is it possible that I can overcome this anxiety? How is it possible that I will overcome this addiction? How is it possible that I will get this new job? How is this possible that I will raise kids in the middle of a pandemic? How is this possible that I will live more with faith and with Without fear. The answer is always going to be Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit living and breathing inside of you. It's always the answer to how will this be to God's promises. So in verse 36, we're almost done. This is this is incredible. We're almost done. In verse 36, it says, Even Elizabeth, your relative, so cousin by the way, is going to have a child in her old age. And she who was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month. So I love how the angel said, hey, the Holy Spirit is the answer to this. This is how it is possible. Let me give you some also proof. The Holy Spirit is involved in your, your cousin Elizabeth. And, and that is the answer because she was unable to conceive. And so her miracle is already living and breathing inside of her. And that's John the Baptist, by the way. If you don't know who John the Baptist is, go look him up. He's awesome. He's, he's awesome. But that's John the Baptist inside Elizabeth, the one who is going to prepare the way for Jesus. And so she was unable to conceive, and now she's in her sixth month. And then in verse 37, it says, For no word from God will ever fail. I want to repeat that again to you no matter where you are, because some of you who are listening to me right now have been given a promise or a word from God, or you've been, giving a, you've been given a direction, you've been given some vision, and maybe it's failing or you feel like it's failing. Maybe it feels like you're failing. Maybe it feels like the odds are impossible. Maybe it feels like it's the, the promise that God has given you is already dead inside the grave. I want to be speaking to you and listen to the sound of my voice that for no word from God will ever fail. While you think that God is not working, let me tell you that he is working. Just in Exodus 14, 14 says, where God is fighting for us, God is working around us in the background, even if you can't see his work, I can promise you that he is working. Even if you can't see the fruit, even if you can't see the results, I can promise you that your God is working for you. Because no God or no word from God will ever fail. There is nothing that can stop God and what he has promised to you. Nothing. Absolutely not. We just have to keep the faith and answer and respond in the exact same way that Mary is about to. Verse 38 it says, I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. Pause. Real quick. Let's understand the context of Mary's response. Mary was just told. 
Mary is a teenager, by the way. She could have been 13, 14, 15. She is just entering her teen years. I am 30 years old, and I still don't know if I can say this. I hope to God that I could. But she is a teenager. And she is she's preparing for her wedding. She she is preparing for her her next phase of her life, her next season. And then all of a sudden, an angel of the Lord appears to her, which is mind-blowing in itself, that's crazy on its face, appears to her and communicates to her, hey, by the way, I know you've got a marriage schedule. I know that you've got your wedding date planned. You probably got your dress. You probably figured out what your first dance is going to be. You probably paid way too much for a DJ who's just going to put play on a Spotify playlist that I could have downloaded for, you know, for 99 cents or something. Um, you probably got all of those plans, but I want to let you know something. So you are going to give birth through the Messiah, the King of Kings, and the Lord of Lords. The Son of God is going to be born through you. And oh, by the way, how it's going to happen is the Holy Spirit is going to be is going to come upon you, and um, and the Most High will overshadow you. The power of the Most High will overshadow you. Are you so? And then Mary's response. Is I am the Lord's servant, may your word to me be fulfilled. Her plan didn't just change, her entire life just changed. And her quickest response to her change of plans, to her monumental shift in her entire life, her response was, I am the Lord's servant, may your word be fulfilled. All of it. All of your word be, be fulfilled. Not just the good things, not just the easy things, not just the comfortable things. May all of your word be fulfilled. And that says the angel left her. So as we close, I want to wrap up with a couple of things that we can do from this amazing living and breathing scripture that we can do to face or to, to what we can do when we are faced with a change of plans. All right, you ready? So number one is we need to remember that plans change, God does not. Your plan, I, there was this old saying, if you, if you want to hear God laugh, make a plan. And I don't know if you've ever heard that. It's, it's pretty prominent here in the South. Um, but plans change all the time. Your plan, probably even to get to where you are, probably changed. You're making hundreds of thousands of decisions every single day, and you make plans, and they change. And sometimes that can be frustrating. Sometimes that can be debilitating. Sometimes that can be awesome. Um, like I remember one time I was, um, I, I was at church on a Sunday. And somebody was like, hey, Troy, I had a change of plans. Would you like to go to the Pan Carolina Panthers game? And I was like, yes, amen, Lord. Oh, my gosh. Thank you so much. Um, I have been highly favored. <laughs> uh, but sometimes they're awesome. Plans change all the time. God doesn't. So we're not going to hitch our wagon to our plans. We're going to hitch our wagon to the, the Creator of the universe, the God of the most uh, uh, of the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. We are going to be rooted in Him rather than our methodology, rather than um, the way we do things, rather than our plans, our processes, what we hope for the future. We are going to hitch our wagon to God because He does not change. Plans change all the time. Number two, above all things. You are his servant. Above all things, you are his servant. I know that this year has been crazy. This year has brought, and I don't know your situation, but it has probably brought, I can just speak for myself, it's brought anxiety and fear and pain, frustration, loneliness, but it's also brought some amazing things as well. And I want, I want to communicate that in the face of change, in the face of these plans being interrupted or altered, we need to remember that above all things, I am his servant. You are his servant. We are his servants. And there's an element of this that it is not about us. Yes, is it inconvenience? Yes, is it terrifying at times? Yes, is it awesome at times? Yes, is it, is it painful at times to have our plans change? Yes, absolutely. But above all things, we are his servant, and we're not called to be comfortable. We are called to be co-workers with Christ, 
We're called to be servants of the kingdom. We're called to go, Matthew 28, and advance the gospel. And so there's an element that this is not about us. It is about him. It is about the kingdom. So no matter what change of plans come your way, and I know that they can hit hard, and I know that they can alter lives, and I know that they can change everything, just remember that above all things, your God has your best intention in his heart and in his mind. He, he wants to design everything for good and that above all things that we are his servant. Okay, number three. This is one of my favorite ones. If God planned it, he will provide for it. If he changes the plans, he's gonna provide for it. It may not be in the way that you think. It may not even be in the way that you want. But if God planned it, he will provide for it. Another way to say it is when God commits, God equips. I'll say that again. When God commits, God equips. So we're not always going to feel prepared for the, for the things that come our way, for the paths and the plans and the purposes and the callings that God has, has given us, has put, positioned us in. But oftentimes we need to remember that just because we are not prepared, that allows us to have more and more faith to lean on Jesus Christ, to lean on the Holy Spirit's power in our lives, to lean on the creator of the universe, to lean on the, the, the king of kings, the one who bore all of our sins on the cross. We may not feel equipped. That's okay because God is equipped and he will equip. He will provide. All right, number four, and then we'll close in prayer. This is just the most beautiful way I can say it, and it's the perfect way to end it with Scripture. God's Word never fails. It never fails. I want, I want you to listen to me. You may feel like a word from God has failed in your life, but God's Word never fails. And so my encouragement to you is that if you're about to quit, keep pressing. If you feel like God has called you to something, keep going. If you if you feel like you're on the edge of, um, if you've, you've just dealt with a lot of pain, if you're dealing with a lot of anxiety, keep fighting because his word never fails. God has something for you on the other side of this storm, on the other side of this valley. And the thing that he may be positioning for is not so that you can be comfortable and not so that everything can be easy, but that you can you can weather a storm and that the next storm that you see, you can look at that storm in the eye and say, storm that God, my God never fails. The word never fails. I am stronger now than I was a year ago because of the last storm that I overcame with Jesus Christ. I'm going to overcome overcome this storm with Jesus Christ and I'm going to overcome the next storm with Jesus Christ because God's word never fails and he is fighting for me and he is with me and he loves me and he has equipped me and he has provided for me and he and he will, has died for me and he has carried every sin that I've ever every mistake he has turned it into a miracle on that cross and he went into that grave and on the third day he rose and he sits on the throne of heaven and do you know why he sits he sits because he has won. You recline at a table when it is finished, just as Jesus said before he took his last breath. It is finished. God's word never fails. So what is it in your life that you feel like you're on the edge of quitting, or maybe you already quit, that God is communicating and the Spirit is stirring into you right now to say you need to pick this back up? God's word. God's word never fails. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for your promises. Thank you for your provision. Thank you for equipping us to fulfill Matthew 28, where we can go, where we can, um, we can go into all of the nations, proclaiming your gospel, advancing your kingdom. And God, I'm just praying an overwhelming amount of your presence and your spirit into the various rooms that we're all in so that we can be overflowed and filled, so that we can overflow into our community, so that we can tell our neighbors about Jesus, so that we can not only talk about Jesus on Sundays, but that we can live, breathe your Holy Spirit and Jesus um, throughout the entire week. God, I don't ask that our time ends today, but that this word continues to carry on through the week. I ask that if there's anybody under the sound of my voice who doesn't know you as their Lord and Savior, that they will be bold and that they will find somebody to talk to and that they will come to know you as their Lord and Savior because it is impossible, just as Mary said, how will this be done? The answer is Jesus. The answer is always Jesus. And so allow us as we go into this Christmas season and as we end this year, this 
this amazing but somewhat troublesome year and we walk into 2020, we walk in with a Holy Spirit swagger and we walk in with confidence knowing that your word never fails. Give us the boldness and the courage to pick up maybe things that you have called us to that we have quit and give us the, give us the execution, the strategy and the plan, not so that we can see every step, but so that we can see our next step, so that we can have clarity and direction uh, as we have faith and as we lean on you and that we rest in your strength. God, I just, I just pray over that community. I pray over everyone who is listening to this sermon. And I pray that we advance the kingdom and we do it not for, our, not for us, but we do it for you and we do it for the people who, who do not know you yet. I pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Haven Church, thank you so much for having me. I, I can't wait for this pandemic to end so I can be in person with you so that we can hug on each other and give high fives and handshakes and, and just have a great time. Um, guys, I just want to wish you uh, happy holidays, Merry Christmas, and uh, we'll see you soon. Hey guys, I'm so glad you were able to join us. If the Haven has been a blessing to you, maybe you'd want to consider being a financial supporter. We're 100% self-funded. Uh, there are a few ways to do it. You can download our app, you can do it through our website. You can mail in a check to the P.O. box that is listed. Uh, we're just in this thing together. We need you. We love you. I will see you soon.